I'll get it installed at 20 degrees timing and then I'm gonna take it to the track and we're gonna put it on a motor analyzer. It shows it at 20 on there. 20 is really 35. So what, ideally you'd be like 36, 36, 36 across the board, right. but that's pretty good so still. What was it? Hello folks, welcome to the NetCruiser RC. Okay, TLR22 5.0 DC Elite. I'm finally going to upgrade the motor system. I've been using a, just an old Ares Pro, that's by Sky RC. 17.5 stock motor in this since I built it, and it's been okay but I have it fully clocked up to the max. Like there is no more timing adjustment in it and I'm still a little bit off pace. I am running this in full blinky stock mode, which I might change later, but for right now, I just want to compare motor to motor. So I'm going to take out the Sky RC and I'm going to put in a Performa P1. I've never used this before, but it seemed like a pretty good deal. I believe I got this from Absolute Hobbies. I got the 17.5 motor and this one is their non-qualified one. So it was a little bit cheaper. Qualified means they put it on their motor analyzer and they tweak it. It would be like building out your own custom stock spec motor. Uh, so I did not do that for this. I just bought the cheaper one because I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I wanted to run it in two wheel drive stock racing at the CIC, the Canadian International uh, Championships. The CIC doesn't look like it's going to happen anymore. And on a week to week basis, my club racing is mostly always two wheel drive mod. Now, stock and mod is actually pretty competitive on our track, but it should be significantly higher quality than the Aries Pro that I was running. It looks fancy. Radical stock Performa Rad iCal. It is dual censored, so it has a sensor on the back and a sensor on the top. This, it's got this guard on it. I just pop that off that'll allow me to solder that on nicely it's like a nice little motor it's lightweight so you can see how they've chamfered this, this down where the the can has weight reduction so it probably weighs quite a bit less than that old motor too so let's put it in and see how it works now in the box you also get a silica gel packet we don't need that anymore some screws, these are likely to adjust the end bell for the timing. This will be replacement screws for these three screws that are back here, just in case you, you lose them. Although that's never happened to, ah, that's never happened on any other motor I've had, so I'm not sure why. And you also get this. I have no idea what that's for. See if there's instructions in here How about that. There's not. It's a plastic tube, really weird. What is that for? Performa Racing, this motor was designed in USA, made in China, but their actual home address is Switzerland. So if you want to learn more about that company, check them out. I asked my RC racing friends and they said that this plastic device is for a rotor removal aid so you don't scratch up the can or the rotor as you pull it out. I don't know how to use it and I don't intend to taking out the rotor. The only thing I do plan on doing is turning up the timing. Out of the box the timing is set at 20 degrees. That seems really low for a stock spec motor. I will probably crank it up to 35 or 40 degrees just to even start. Now I do have my TLR22 set on what I consider to be max gearing, which is around 30, 31 teeth, I believe. So that's a 31 tooth pinion. Also, the reason why I would also want to change this is because uh, my, my motor mounting screws in the can itself of the motor are stripped out. Two point five mil screws out. The top one was in good shape, but it's the bottom one that had stripped out. They make a little cut out here so you can stick your tool through. Alrighty. Oh, there we go. Motor is now out. This is a Sky RC Aries Pro Competition 17.5 stock spec. It's okay. I really can't complain that much considering how cheap these are. These are like 60 bucks new Canadian, probably $40 US. Uh, dual sensor ports, I do like that feature, and uh, have the current timing cranked up to the max. On the new motor, on the Performa P1 Radical, this one also has dual sensor ports, which is good. Uh, I'll probably end up using this back one again instead of the top one. We're going to leave it at stock spec timing for now. I'll get it installed at 20 degrees timing, and then I'm going to take it to the track, and we're going to put it on a motor analyzer, and then I'll see using a motor analyzer, what kind of RPM are we getting out of it, as well as where the sweet spot is for timing. So let's put it in. 
initial thoughts is it seems less torquey, which might be a very good thing for two-wheel drive. So let's go to the track. Okay, guys, we're at the track. I did just go out and test this Performa P1 box stock at the 20-degree timing. It felt not bad, almost close to what I was at before at 40-degree timing on another motor. But uh, we got a motor analyzer here. We're going to chart it out and see what it does. Okay, so this checks the sensor board or checks the timing across the sensor the, board. Uh, across the three sensors, the A, B, and right. C. So the end bars are set at 20 degrees, 20 degrees right now. out of the box, 20 degrees, yeah. So then we'll see how close the three sensors are to ABC. Okay. Some guys, if they're too far off, they'll actually unsolder it and move it a little bit to try it, but it's yeah, like just, that. just gives you an idea. <laughs> and then I don't think these things are 100% accurate either, but it gives yeah. you some kind of indication. Yeah. So it's 35. Uh, it's even though 35. They, so 36, 34, 36, that's pretty good wow. actually. So they're even, but on here, when you read it on here, it shows it at 20. Unless I'm, yeah, it shows it at 20 on there. 20 is really 35. So what, ideally you'd be like 36, 36, 36 across the board, right. but that's pretty good so, still. Well, interesting that the gauge is so far off. So we kind of let it max peak. And we stop it and then it stores the last kind of number. So your KV was 2400, mm -hmm. your volts, that's battery 7.8, and then your current was only 2.9 amps. So it's very low current very right low now. Current. And then your RPM is just your KV times your uh, volts. And then we'll just start dialing we'll up timing and see where we get. So now I'm just adjusting the end bell. I loosened off three screws. Now you can just twist the end bell. Don't take the screws right out or the whole sensor portion of the board falls apart. Then you can just dial it up. So we're gonna go to 30 next and then tighten down the screws and we'll test it again. Three timing now, we'll see what the analyzer says it is really. Probably gonna be 45. It's funny actually, depending on how uh, tight you make those screws on the sensor board, it'll actually change the timing slightly. Oh, I didn't tighten them right down. Oh, that's okay, but. 44, 44. yeah, that's what I thought. It'd be around 44, 45, 44, 43, 45. 45 degrees really, 30 on end bell. So will I get more KV? Or we're just watching for amps. That's what I don't quite get. Yeah, we are getting more KV. Yeah. So as we, uh, as you increase the the timing of the end build, you'll get more KV and more amps. Like right. right. So we're now. At so it'll run a bit hotter. Four point seven amps. Twenty five seventy four KV. So what he's doing here is we're charting it out, and then when we start to see a big spike in amps, that's where basically we'll just dial it back a little bit of that. So you want it right before the amps spike, and that way you're going to get the most RPM for the least amount of amps, right? That's kind of what you're trying to go for? That's right. So it doesn't get too hot yeah. on track. Okay. I've now set the end bell to 40, oh, 40, okay. 40 degrees, which is likely gonna read at a 55. Wow. 52. 52, 50, and a 53. Wow. So the spread, it got more of a spread at that upper end. So it was three degrees off in the middle. The middle sensor, sensor B always reads low. Okay, and now we'll do the RPM for amps. And we're way high in amps, 10.2. But we got our 3000 KV, <laughs> yeah. right? So that means, you know, don't run it at full max timing on the end bell because that's way too high amp. So we just want to dial it down a bit. Okay, we dialed it down to 32 degrees on the end bell, which was really a 45 degree timing, 44, yeah. 45. And that's where we're at. So that was the kind of you're in that six amp target. 2721. Ob Obviously, I'm really not that impressed for that kind of amperage. I should be getting 3000 kV if this was a really good motor, but uh, you know, we'll see. So we settled at that 32 degree timing on the end bell, which is really around 44 degrees timing. That got me to uh, 2721 kV at six amps. So we're gonna go out in the track now and see what that feels like. Let's go try it on track, see what it feels like. Honestly, it's not much different. Thirty five point two. For overall speed, it seems like it's not all that different. Twenty-eight flat. See if I can get into a twenty-five second lap. Really, is the goal here? 
Okay, that was at the 32 degree, 32 degree timing end bell and we're at around 107 degrees. So I've got temp to play with, only 90, 80, 90 degrees at that back where it's getting active cooling, but at the front it's around 106. So I'm gonna dial it up a bit because really it did not feel fast enough for me, even though we're at that kind of that sweet spot for amps. I think I'm gonna go up a little bit more to get in like 2800 to 30, like I don't wanna get up that high, but split the difference between these two. Try and get into like 2800, 2900 RPM. KV, I mean, should be better. Quick little cool down, change of battery. I dialed up the timing some more, so now I'm at like 38.5 degrees on the end bell. We're probably pulling around eight amps, which is high, but whatever. See if I can get the speed out of it. Oh, I also put my Ellipse front tires on backwards. Try and get more initial steering. Ooh, it feels faster. For sure. Twenty-seven point two. Even slow. Twenty-nine point three. Twenty-nine point three first lap. See if I can get a clean lap around. Uh nope. Ooh, I think I like the ellipses backwards on the front. 30 Could be a good lap. Could be my best yet. Do we get in the 25s? 26.6. Ah, 26.6. That's the same as last lap. So this was at the uh, like 38 degrees on the end bell. I'm just only a couple degrees hotter than I was before. So I think I'm good there. Keep it at that. Yeah, safe for temp, that's for sure. All right, out of curiosity and to make the video make sense, we're going to test my old motor. This is the Aries Pro 17.5 and I've got the end bell timing cranked up right to the very max. Looks to be even beyond 40, I think. Right? Yeah, is it off the charts? Pretty high. Yeah, it's it's as far it's as I could 40. twist it. Yeah. So it's probably going to read high. I'm curious to see where we at because if it has a higher KV and higher amp, technically this motor's faster than what I just upgraded to. We'll see what it reads. Let's see if the end bell is accurate on this guy. So we'll check the timing on it. I've actually had this motor for many years. I used to run it on road and then I just reused it for off road. I've been fairly satisfied for the price. See if timing is accurate. 54. It actually is fairly accurate because oh, I'm off the. Your, your three phases are 54, 53, 54. It's like, oh, it's, all got, the a good, are it's got a good sensor board. They're all lined very well. Nice. Let's see what we get for KV. Okay, testing. Whoa. Hey, look at that. It is a downgrade. 7.4 amps, 33. Yeah. 3305. So the only thing you gotta remember, because this is like um, a free spin, it doesn't spin. take into account, like the motor's just free spinning, there's no load on it. So it doesn't right. take take into account the torque. So okay. sometimes when you see a high KV like that, mm -hmm. it's actually because the motor doesn't have very much power and the rotor is not as strong. So it spins up really fast. Oh. But you put load on it and it doesn't- and it slows down. Yeah, that's right. So how can you test them with load? Yeah, you need a real dyno. Okay guys, it's probably a pretty long video. We're gonna end it here. That's testing in a new stock motor, 17.5, Performa P1. I've got it dialed up to around 2800 kV. It feels fine. It now finally feels better than my Aries Pro. And I'm just trying to dial in my steering and learn my driving a bit better. So all right guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new on here, subscribe. If you wanna to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.